What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Redemption with Jaden. Today, uh, we're going to be doing kind of a... Uh, I mean, there's not going to be any gameplay in this video, but it's going to be a review of some of the spoilers from uh, that we've seen from the new set coming out this year, uh, Gospel of Christ. Might be Gospels of Christ. Uh, not sure at the moment. <laughs> GOC is how everyone always uh, says it, but I mean, like, it's it's the gospel, but uh, the set is going to be focused on the uh, four synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John from the Bible. So we're going to be seeing a lot more New Testament themes. Really excited for that since the last few sets have been kind of Old Testament focused. So uh, we're going to get some more love for our New Testament uh themes, but uh, it's also, it sounds like it's going to be kind of different, so I'm excited to kind of share what we've heard uh, so far about it with you guys, um, but first we're going to go ahead and have a couple of announcements here. As you can see on the screen here, we have uh, the National Tournament promo for 2021 is, has been, now been spoiled, and uh, this card looks pretty sweet. Uh, the national tournament for this year was announced um, maybe like a month ago now uh, that it's going to be happening August 12th through 14th in Canyon Lake, Texas. Um, it's really uh, great that we've got this like venue that um, it, it seems like it's kind of like a almost like a campsite kind of built into it. So uh, really awesome venue where you know, you're staying overnight and even you know, bringing your family so you can hang out, do a little um, you know, camping sort of stuff, but also playing redemption during the day and having some uh, you know awesome time with the redemption family. So um, I'm planning to be there. I really hope to see you guys there. Hope you can make it. And um, yeah, check out the GoFundMe if you're kind of wondering, you know, how am I going to get there? Like if, if finances are an issue, Roy Cruz has been setting up, um, this a GoFundMe for, um, you know, trying to make sure that everyone who wants to come to nationals can, uh, because it's uh, open to anybody. Anybody can play. There's even type A for, uh, I think like 12 and under is usually the, um, the, the age range, but, um, depending on, um, you know, where you're at in the game and, uh, you know, how far away from that age range are, age range you are, the, the hosts might be more flexible about that. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to meet, you know, redemption players from all over the country, um, and, um, really have some, some great fellowship. I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, let's go ahead and talk about this promo, uh, and I'm going to give, uh, kind of like how I'm going to do with the, the spoilers that we've seen so far. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about, um, well, some of the, the spoilers we don't have abilities for yet, so I might, you know, theorize a little bit on that. Uh, but this one we do have an ability for. So um, it's a 4-4 clay red hero. Humble Seeker has the identifiers, generic, symbolic, and involves music, which um, are all, uh, all three of those are kind of important to some degree. Um you may exchange this card with a meek hero from deck, reserve, or discard pile. Protect meek heroes and lost souls from an evil brigade of your choice. Cannot be prevented. So this is kind of... Um, uh, I read this at first. I was a little bit scared. So I was like, wait, I thought we were moving away from like protection like that. Especially with um, you know when it's kind of free. Because you are you get to exchange for another hero. But the thing is, you have to exchange for a meek hero. So it's going to be... Um, you know, kind of ending the battle you don't get like another ability afterwards um there's no additional effects like you know angel under the oak lets you draw two and then exchange for a judge and then it protects gideon from opponents so the um there's a little um like added bonus that makes that that's what makes angel under the oak more um I don't know, broken, <laughs> uh, more of an include or more included in competitive decks, which I mean, for a national tournament promo, this is like the, the participation one, the way that they've been doing it in recent years is you get one promo for each category that you participate in. So, um, you can participate in up to one category per day over the three days. So you could get up to three of these, um, and I think that, you know, the power level should be pretty, you know, 
high up there. Like we've seen Noah's Ark um, and Glory of well, I guess Glory of the Lord. Yeah, that was um, wasn't exactly a reprint, or I mean, it was a reprinted card, but it got an updated ability. Um, so like those are kind of some examples of uh, in the Tabernacle um, you know, cards that are are certainly powerful, um, but kind of in the right deck. And this this one is definitely one of those kind of cards where it can be powerful, but in the right deck. Um, so it, the notable differences between this and like a, uh, a hero like Angel Under the Oak, uh, we talked about the no drawing or kind of the extra abilities there. It also doesn't exchange to your discard pile or your, ter or, sorry, uh, your hand or your territory. So the locations that it goes to, or that it exchanges to requires you to get it back again, either, you know, drawing it from your deck, having a card to search it out of your reserve, or recurring it from your discard pile. Um, so it's not going, or it's not quite as, um, you know, free, so to speak, where you can just, like, do it consistently every turn with your, um, you know, whatever meek hero you want to use. Um, and you also, I mean, if you want to keep exchanging it, so if you do have a way to keep searching it from your deck or something, you usually have to exchange to a different meek hero because, you know, if your meek hero wins the battle, uh, which, or, you know, are at least not discarded, which if they're protected, then uh, that's likely to happen, um, then they'll go back to your territory. So, you know, that's kind of a location where you know, maybe you have a way to shuffle them back into your deck or put them in your reserve, like, I don't know, Bethlehem from Lineage of Christ. It's an alright card. Um, then, you know, you can you can consistently do it, but it, it does have some variation in, like, I mean, you you might want to have a few different meek heroes that you can go for, because if you, you know, have one that you really wanted to go to and you draw it, well, then you're kind of um, out of luck unless you can reset it somehow. Um, it protects meek heroes and lost souls from evil brigade of your choice. So it doesn't just protect the hero that you exchange for, but also protects heroes in your territory, which you know, could be important if you're um, running a you know meek hero strategy. Um, and then also lost souls um, is also is, is important because it stops a lot of chump blocks like Uza and Death of Unrighteous and um, Belshazzar's Banquet, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it is a little bit limited because it has to be an evil brigade of your choice. Uh, this might encourage people to run you know, more variety in their um, defenses, kind of more splash defenses, which are pretty common along or among you know, top tier competitive decks. But also, Shield is a really strong card that requires um, unity of your evil characters sharing an evil brigade. So, Humble Seeker. You know, you pretty much just choose the brigade that they have unity for, and then you'll be protected from all of their characters. Um, so that would be kind of cool. But then again, if they have shield, then just be careful when you exchange it be to your deck reserve or discard pile, because that will be considered a search, and uh, fortresses don't have a brigade, so they will still be able to underdeck a lost soul with shield. It also says cannot be prevented, which kind of makes it seem like it is... Um, you know, really hard to to stop. They've um, kind of had a focus on moving away from uh, cannot be negated protection just because of problems with you know, like Thaddeus from Disciples. He was pretty big. Um, if you saw my Disciples Demons deck uh, from uh, the April online tournament, yeah, um, then you got a little bit of a, a taste of how uh, how good that strategy is i mean mostly was like it was you know other strategies have kind of come up to its level i guess but um definitely in its you know, in its prime it was uh you know the, the best deck out there i think um and he was cannot be interrupted angel of the oak cannot be negated they've been kind of moving away from that kind of stuff on on offense at least i mean like foreign wives i think is still pretty good for the game um, but having too many of those just kind of takes a lot out of the, the battle phase, which is um, you know, something we want to kind of move back into, I think, you know, just to make the game more um, you know, interactive, I guess. Um, so when it says cannot be prevented, that means that it can't be stopped you know, before it attacks, um, but 
Since the protection is an ongoing ability that activated in battle, then interrupt the battle can still um, you know, interrupt that protection. Even though the card is no longer in play, uh, it doesn't exchange the territory, so it won't be in play. So anything that says interrupt the battle and um, you know discard a hero or uh, play the next enhancement, which you can use to win the battle or something like that, um, that will allow or that will create a window where your meek heroes and lost souls are no longer protected. So you play dream, interrupt the battle, draw three cards, play the next enhancement, which can be Belshazzar's banquet, to discard your book characters and protect the lost souls, and that's going to work against you know, a meek hero that humble seeker exchanged for. Um, so that makes it a little bit um, more um, balanced, I guess. Um, there's still you know, some ways you can work around this, like if you have Joy from Early Church, you can place it on Humble Seeker beforehand and just make it so its ability cannot be negated, and then when you exchange, Joy will follow because it's a place enhancement. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like Esther, like it's not built in cannot be negated protection, but it's um, you know, kind of a way that you can piece it together. Um, I mean, in the right deck, that's... Um, you know, definitely viable. It's really easy to to get joy back if you use like the Holy Spirit dominant or something. Maybe that will um, you know see more use, or uh, it might have kind of more um, involvement with uh, GOC. Maybe not quite as much because Holy Spirit didn't really come to like the um, you know disciples and, and such until after Jesus left them, which would be, you know, after the Gospels, but um, we, might, we might see some of that, I'm not sure. Um, we definitely have some clay cards, which are usually indicative of the Holy Spirit, I guess. Um, so anyways, this is the participation promo. Um, I guess, yeah, I, I mentioned the identifiers. Generic, you know, you can have more than one in play at the same time. That's not a huge deal, you can only have more than one in type two, um, and you, in that case you can only have two because it's two brigades, and usually they're just going to be exchanging, so I don't know if you ban multiple or two of them into battle at the same time, doesn't really give you any extra bonus, I guess you can have, you can choose two evil brigades, so, well, maybe. Um, symbolic makes it a little bit harder to target because it's not a human, um, and um, it's not, like, um, male or female, I don't, I don't think, like, symbolic characters, I believe, are genderless, um, so, makes it a little bit harder to target for some things, but, um, I, I'm not sure how much that will necessarily, um, uh, make a, make a difference, um, but the involves, involves music is kind of cool, because you can work it in with, like, a music leader, uh, strategy, um, what we might see some more me heroes that, um, you know, are musicians or, or something like that, um, so mixing kind of, uh, a meek and musician strategy, we might see some of that, uh, in, in the future here, so, I don't know, I think that's a, I think it's a really cool card, uh, I don't think it's too overpowered or, um, you know, not worthy of being a national promo, uh, so it, it definitely kind of fits that happy medium, I think. Moving on, uh, we have another national promo that's been spoiled. Uh, I don't think it was mentioned which um, what this promo is for, but um, this is a reprint of Grapes of Wrath from TXP, and it does uh, you know, exactly the same thing, except it has updated wording so that it um, fits the um, errata or kind of the maybe confusing language that um, it, it had before, so um, it can still be used to in all the same ways, kind of defensively or offensively to start a new battle or in a side battle even. Uh, there's kind of a little combo you can do there where you create a side battle and then discard their evil character, shuffle yours, and or you know whichever, and that yeah, is, is kind of like another Angel of the Lord, almost. Um, so, yeah, definitely a cool card. Um, they've been doing a lot of dominant, um, like, full art uh, cards or borderless cards for, um, like, first, second, and third place uh, promos. So uh, I'm expecting that this is one of those. Um, 
let's see, I think last year uh, it was another Angel of the Lord, and then they also uh, a lot of times do like an Angel, like Michael and Strong Angel have both been uh, reprinted and Captain of the Host. Um, and then we've also seen down ones like Christian Martyr falling away and, and Son of God kind of being the, the biggest one. Um, and then Mayhem was also kind of given the same updated wording reprint. Um, but that was the participation promo last year. So um, I feel like the only dominance left that either, you know, like haven't been reprinted with a, a borderless version in a set or as a promo is like Guardian is um, maybe another one that, that we could expect to see. Um, I think Burial isn't really popular enough and I, as we'll maybe talk about later, I'm kind of expecting to see a reprint in uh, Gospels of Christ or GOC. Um, so that doesn't seem very likely either. Um, so I, I feel like Guardian might be the other, um, you know, like first or third place one. And then this is the you know, one of the first or third place ones and then second place we'll probably see um you know an angel or something is has kind of been the um the go-to just so that like third place still gets a card that's used quite a bit second place gets used card that's used quite a bit and then something that's a little more you know, niche and then you know, first place gets kind of the you know, the big one i guess i don't know i'd if I were to guess, I would say Guardian would be the big one. Grapes is the third place. That's just kind of my, my prediction. Because um, I haven't seen Grapes played quite as much, but eh, I'm not sure. Guardian also does did have an alternate border version in um, you know, when it was reprinted in Revelation of John. So it, it might not be one of them. Um, maybe there's a dominant I'm missing. Like, I don't know, maybe a new beginning from Fall of Man might get a borderless version. Um, but I mean, Guardian, it, it had just an alternate border. It wasn't borderless or like full art or it was, it was full art, but not borderless. I think, yeah, borderless, I think means that there's like no white border around the card. So, um, maybe that's, that, that's just what it is in my head. So maybe it's different. I don't know. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Um, the third promo that has been spoiled so far is the worker promo. So that'll be for like judges, the hosts, um, you know, anyone who's um, uh, working to make all of the awesome things that nationals happen happen. Um, I think they're going to be given to the people who made like the the promo videos and posters and stuff for nationals, uh, which is pretty sweet. I'm a little uh, disappointed I didn't get in on that when I had the chance, but I just didn't really have the time to kind of put something together for it. Um, so, th uh, this card is, is really sweet. Angel of the Winds is pretty popular, and, uh, this art is just awesome for this. Um, so I'm really excited about this one. Definitely going to have to grab myself, uh, a copy of it at some point if I'm um, don't end up being able to help out with stuff at Nationals. I don't know. We'll see how um, things end up there. Um, I'm hoping to try to help out with like getting the live streams or maybe like commentating on, on stuff as I've done in the past. Um, so I don't know. We'll see how things go there, but uh, definitely hoping to get at least one of these, maybe two. I don't know, because it, it, it's a card that goes in, in multiple decks. Um, no, I wouldn't have been surprised if this was, like, the angel that they chose for uh, the second place, because, like, I mean, usability-wise, it's, it's up there with, um, you know, like, Captain, Strong Angel, Michael, um, and it's not, like, a, you know, overpowered, like, they're, they're definitely not going to do this for, like, an angel under the oak or something that, you know, was hopefully going to be <laughs> rotated out at some point. As much as I, you know, like using the card, uh, I like using judges, but the card has just become splashable in too many different themes, especially with Joshua the Conqueror. We won't get into that. That's that's for another time. Um, so that's all about nationals, and I'm really excited for it. Um, I'm thinking I might uh, release a video at some point, kind of talking about the uh, the meta uh, leading up to nationals, what to expect, uh, what I. I you know, expect I might have a couple or you know 
one or, or more guests on the channel who are you know competitive players who might be able to have kind of a, an interview type conversation or uh, just kind of talking about it so let me know if you guys want to see something like that and maybe i'll try to um, get that worked out as we get closer to nationals and um, i think that would be kind of cool especially because i think there's a lot to talk about without having a new set released uh, between you know, nationals 2020 and nationals 2021 um, I guess that hasn't really been finalized. I don't know if uh, they'll have GOC ready by the time um, we get to Nationals, but I'm thinking at this point that it won't be legal by Nationals. Um, it would, you know, would or could maybe coincide with Nationals, the release, as they've done in years past. Um, not, not the past few years, but like in, you know... Um, a number of years ago they they used to always release the sets like at nationals so they would have like booster draft with the new set and, and all that kind of stuff i remember one of my first nationals doing booster draft was with the the foof tin i got the the foof tin six with the the daniel heroes and the the philistines i thought that was um you know, kind of fun doing a, a foof tin or a, a tin draft until i you know, got better at the game, I was like, eh, no, this isn't quite as good, I'd rather just draft other stuff, you know, but, um, I do think the, the tins were, were kind of fun, even though they introduced a lot of busted cards, but, <laughs> um, looking at you, Samuel. Anyways, um, before we get to Nationals, though, there's a new seasonal promo that, um, I don't know that a lot of people have their hands on yet, but, um, I'm expecting a few of them in the mail from online tournaments and stuff, uh, which is pretty sweet. Uh, Pride of Lions. You can take up to three lions from deck, discard pile, and or reserve. Character may ban to any number of lions. If used by a lion, you may shuffle this card after battle, and this card cannot be negated. Lots of lion stuff. And I think that this is the card that might take animals from kind of a meh strategy to like a more competitive strategy. Um, it doesn't interrupt the battle or anything, so it's not like lurking or, um, you know, you do need to have initiative to play it, but taking three lions from deck, discard pile, and or reserve, so, um, you know, at no matter what point in the game you're at, they're always going to find some targets, um, and then you can ban to any number of lions, and then it's, you know, reusable if you play it on a lion and it cannot be negated. Uh, it does mean it gets tossed by Colosseum, but, I mean, which which is a little annoying because, like, Colosseum Lions, you kind of want to run Colosseum, so there's some, you know, synergy there, but I think Colosseum Lions doesn't, well, it is maybe one of the targets you go for, uh, especially in Type 1, because if, if they have a good enhancement out that you can discard, then you get to, to play an enhancement, which can be pretty good uh, with other Lions, but, like, Lions from Cloud of Witnesses, uh, just, you know, says discard a human, opponent can, um, I think it's reveal a good dominant from hand instead, if it's a hero, um, yeah, if it's a hero, it's owner may reveal a good dominant from hand instead, um, there's also Devouring Lion, which says reserve a human, if it's a hero, it's owner may reveal a star card or match brigade from hand instead, so, like, if you get both of these, then you, you know, can, they can both target, um, the, the hero in battle, and then they have to have, you know, a negate, or, or they have, have, like, two negates, a, an dominant and a star card, or a dominant or a star card and a negate for the other one, um, so it's kind of like you're attacking on two fronts, and they have to have, you know, both the answers right away, and, I mean, the card's reusable, so you can you know, keep on doing this. You can ban to any number of lions, which I'm really excited about in Type 2, uh, because the third and maybe most important lion is Negev Lions. Uh, it says, first strike, opponent must discard a good card from their hand. You may draw X, limit 3, which is the number of your lions. So if you take up to 3 lions from deck with Pride of Lions, that's automatically a draw three if you abandon you know, Negev Lions at the end, um, which is, you know, pretty good, especially if you're also getting characters that can, um, that, uh, can, like, remove the hero from battle, win the battle for you. 
where I think that this card is like where I'm probably going to use it the most and where it might just be like OP <laughs> is in type 2 where you can run th up to four copies of Negev Lions which is generic and then you can play this search for three copies of Negev Lions ban them all into battle you draw nine cards assuming that they all enter play at the same time um, I'm not exactly sure how that works with banding so I mean somewhere between six and nine cards and you make your opponent discard three good cards from their hand so depending on how many cards they have in their hand that's you know could be all of their good cards their good enhancements um, you know it, it could just be everything that they had and if you you know play this off of like um, you know, let's say you use Nebuchadnezzar, play it from your deck, so that you can, you know, search it out right away, so maybe you're playing it on, like, turn, you know, one, two, or three, that's just kind of ridiculous, like, I mean, if you're playing it on Nebuchadnezzar, you don't get to shuffle it, and it can be negated, but you're, I mean, there might not have something to negate it if you're discarding all these cards, you get to draw a bunch of cards, maybe you draw a dominant to, to stop them if you need to, or... Uh, I think that's just a little bit crazy. I'm kind of excited to try it out, and um, I don't know, maybe maybe I'll be using this in my Type 2 deck at Nationals. Who knows? I think that that's um, just kind of ridiculous. Like, I thought that Nebuchadnezzar to Betrayal on turn 1 was kind of nuts, because you can underdeck their battle winner, and then you get to draw 3 cards. Nebuchadnezzar to Pride of Lions to you know, Triple Negev Lions on turn 1, that's that's where it's at. I'm, I'm excited for that. So now we're going to be getting into uh, the Gospels of Christ set. And um, as we get closer to the release of it, I do want to... Um, uh, I'll certainly be doing at least one box opening of it on my channel. Um, I, know I don't do a whole lot of box openings, but... Um, I mean, the, I guess the main reason for that is because... I have a lot of cards. There aren't really a whole lot of cards that I need at this point and that I'm, you know, willing to just you know, go out and buy a box and you know, open it up and then be like, okay, what do I do with all these cards? Which, um, you know, got me to think like other um, card gamers, I guess, um, like you know, big, um, I guess, people in in other card games, what they will often do is, uh, if they have a YouTube channel, is you know, have boxes sent to them by their you know, patrons or uh, subscribers or whatever, and um, then they'll do a box opening video with it and then send the cards to the person so that, um, you know, I'm not keeping the cards, but I do get to open them and you kind of get to see cards in the set, how the packs look, and everything like that, so uh, if any of you guys ever want to do something like that, where um, you're thinking about buying a box, and you're like, oh, this would be, you know, cool to try to get it in a video, but I don't really have the setup for that, or the, the platform setup or anything, um, I would be more than happy to open a box for you, um, you know, you can just have it sent to me, um, and then I'll open it, record it, We'll get that posted, and then I'll just, you know, put the cards back into, um, you know, obviously a, a safe shipping container and, and send it right back to you so that you get all those cards. So um, if anyone is ever interested in doing that, you can just let me know on, you know, Discord or um, wherever, you know, you can probably find me somewhere if you're if you're on Discord or the forums. Um, I, would, I think that would be pretty sweet. Um, but as new sets come out, I'll definitely do a box opening and maybe I'll do, you know, one here and there, kind of just depending on how, um, you know, where funds are at and if I'm like, okay, well, I could, I could use a few more cards for this set or whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to spend the, the money if I feel it's, you know, going to be worthwhile, but if it's just for the video, I don't really want to go out for, um, a, you know, whole new box if you catch my drift. So, Anyways, getting on to um, GOC, I'm really excited about this set and the cards we're going to see. First, we're going to go over the dominance in the set because I think that's what 
everyone's most excited about. Um, this was one that I think, um, I want to say it was, um, Kai Murphy's son, Aiden, uh, who came up with the idea and he, um, they kind of posted on the boards and were, um, I think it, it maybe changed a little bit, um, but I think that, uh, it was eventually decided that this would be a part of the set. Um, they might change the, the ability a little bit. I mean, it was kind of a very early spoiler release, so, um, crowd's choice is, um, you know, possibly not at the final version, but I think it's actually a pretty good spot for where a dominant should be. Um, the good side is you can take a good card from deck or reserve. The evil side is you can take an evil card from deck or reserve. So it's just a straight up tutor for, you know, um, pretty much any card in your deck or reserve. It can't grab neutral cards, but it can, you know, target dual alignment cards as either good or evil. Um, and it, you know, just goes and gets it for you. So I think that this isn't going to be very popular in um, a lot of like aggressive, you know, draw, get all your stuff decks, um, you know, which are most top tier decks these days, just because the dominant slots are so important. But I think it really does open a lot of, um, uh, open some doors, I guess, into the combo uh, deck arena, I guess, or like the, the competitiveness of combo decks, which I think is really cool. I mean, I always love a good combo deck. Um, so I think that this is a pretty cool dominant for, um, kind of making combo decks more viable, I guess. Cause, um, I mean, I think that there are a few strategies that, um, are you know, not like that aggressive strategy that people want to see more of, but it's just not quite there yet. And I think that this is a really great card for enabling that. So um, we'll see if it stays this way. I mean, this was spoiled a long time ago, like I said, and um, there's still you know, play testing and stuff to do, which speaking of which, the reason I'm doing the spoiler video now and not closer to like when the set is probably actually going to be released is because I'm most likely going to be involved in, in some of the playtesting. Um, and so I'm doing it at this point when I have like no knowledge, no more knowledge of the set than you guys do. Um, and so all of this is just going to be, you know, speculation. I guess I maybe should have prefaced that at the beginning of the, the video so that you guys aren't just waiting for like, oh, when's he going to, you know, reveal all the cards? No, this is all stuff that's been posted either on the forums or mostly in Discord. I kind of went through and, and grabbed all the, the images, and, um, yeah, I'm just going to be kind of speculating on all of it. None of it's, um, you know, set in stone or is going to be, none of it's, don't take it any of it as gospel, <laughs> uh, but... That's just, um, I'm kind of giving you my experienced player perspective, um, having not seen the cards yet, and um, I think playtesting will be going on relatively soon, uh, so I want to make sure that this is, um, you know, out there before I try to make the video and have to, like, filter myself, like, make sure I don't say anything that... You know, I shouldn't be saying. Hopefully, I do get to spoil some cards on my channel. I think that would be pretty cool. But um, yeah, we'll we'll have to keep an eye out for that as as we keep going, getting closer to the the release of the set here. Second dominant that's been kind of spoiled is a reprint of Harvest Time, which uh, was originally released in Warriors and then was a um, a tournament winner promo for a while. And what it does, if your opponent doesn't have a lost soul, it um, lets you search their deck for a lost soul and put it in their land of bondage. Definitely hasn't seen a whole lot of play recently. Um, it was actually in the Type 1 multiplayer deck that Jeremy Chambers built for um, the, the live stream on my channel um, a couple weeks ago. And um, so I think there maybe is a spot for it in Type 1 multiplayer because what can happen a lot of times, or I mean really any multiplayer category, because what can happen a lot of times is like there's one player who, um, you know, doesn't have defense or something, and then you know the person across from you attacks them, gets a freebie. The person, you know, to your right attacks them, gets a freebie, and then it's your turn, and they don't have any lost souls left. Well, 
you just play harvest time on them instead of make, taking the risk of attacking someone else. Um, but I think the reprint that they're going to be going for here, um, it, it seems like it's going to be reprinted and kind of upgraded with a better ability that might make it more playable in type 1 2 player or I, mean, I guess just 2 player categories. Um, I think, I mean, the other, like the most popular use case for it in the past was like, uh, your opponent plays something like Death of Unrighteous, discards their evil characters, and shuffles all of their lost souls. Well, then you play Harvest Time before the battle is over, and you can fish a lost soul back out from their deck, and it's you know, basically a, a freebie um, because they got rid of themselves for you. So um, I think that you know there will still be kind of that soul-generating component to it, but it might be more powerful, maybe get out more souls, not have the condition of... Your opponent not having any lost souls uh, it might negate the lost soul that it searches for um, because a lot of lost souls are say like if uh, put in play by an opponent's special ability to do such and such so um, it might you know negate it this turn or, or something like that like um, East of Eden is a, is a card that does that um, so I'm looking forward to seeing you know, what the new Harvest Time does I think it's going to be um, no, uh, probably a rare. Um, I don't know if they would. I, I think they're kind of trying to move away from ultra rare dominance, just because, um, you know, like three woes and second coming, kind of tends to make them into like staples. But also, I mean, we saw like Chronicles of the Kings and Doubt um, were both ultra rares in the last set, um, and Chronicles of the Kings is maybe arguably a staple. Doubt certainly not, um, but you know, still good in in some cases. So, I don't know, it's kind of a toss-up. Um, as we kind of go through the cards here, you'll see that they're, um, you know, don't have, like, the, the borders that rares and, and ultra rares would normally have, like ultra rares in recent sets have been borderless, and rares in a lot of them have um, been, like, full art or something. Uh, but we, um, usually when they do spoilers and stuff, they all have the same rarity. They just have an R there for rare. I guess we can maybe go back uh, to Crowd's Choice. You can see that there is a rare in the, the bottom left corner there. Um, I'm not even sure if that's the set icon necessarily, too. I'm not sure if that's been spoiled yet. Um, but they just have rare in the bottom corner because that's just kind of a, a placeholder for the rarities which are decided you know, later on in the, the process. So Star of Bethlehem is another dominant that's been spoiled. We get to see kind of the top and a little bit of the star ability, which this is going to be the first dominant with a star ability, which is pretty cool. Um, the You can kind of just tell from the, the top shaving of the, the star ability, and it was confirmed uh, that the star ability was top deck a star card from uh, discard pile. Actually, Maybe this wasn't confirmed. I think this was just like the most likely um, guess, or I don't know. Some of these were confirmed in the Discord because people were guessing. Some of them weren't um, guessed and are just kind of my figuring out. But you can kind of just see how like it starts with a you know T there. There's a star in there, and then just the the spacing kind of works out. So a top deck a star card from discard pile. Um, Interestingly, it doesn't say good star card. Um, like there's there's not space for that, so you can you know, get like your Balaam's prophecy or um, you know, some of the evil star cards that uh, like betrayal and stricken all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think that that's um, yeah, kind of interesting. I do like kind of the. Um, I don't know, a lot, a lot of star abilities are like this, where they're, um, you know, nothing super powerful, like top decking cards isn't all that great, unless you have Jeshua, I guess, but, um, but you know, for a star ability, that's kind of you know, where you want it, the, the power level, you don't want it to be like, you know, super OP, like search your deck for a card, and you know, or search your discard pile for a card, like putting it into your hand, because that's just more, it's like, you know, at the beginning of your turn you get a draw four instead of a draw three, and that's a little bit overpowered, I think. We also have a new identifier that's going to be in this set of nativity, is the identifier here. Um, 
Gabe said uh, that there will be, I think, he said there are over 20 cards in GOC with the new nativity identifier, so um, that's pretty cool. It sounds like it's just going to be um, you know, stuff that's, uh, let's see, be, or, yeah, Na nativity was being a card from the nativity story, um, yeah, so I think just any card um, that is involved in the nativity story which we'll actually see a lot of because a lot of the spoilers were um given like around christmas so they were like oh well mary joseph you know shepherds all this kind of stuff that around the nativity story is um, what we got the most spoilers of um so not exactly sure how it's going to be um you know, used yet might be some unity stuff uh, might not be quite as br or quite broad enough for unity stuff but like you know certainly there will be some like search for nativity card or you know reveal a nativity card or you know grab one from reserve or something like that it's usually how new um you know uh keywords i guess are, are used or i guess they're they're not really keywords they're more like terms i guess um Going on to the artifact that we've seen spoiled so far, um, we just have the manger, which um, I did kind of do, uh, see again, the nativity uh, identifier there, and then I kind of, this was one that I'm pretty sure wasn't um, figured out like in the Discord, but um, using the, the font that uh, Redemption cards use, which is like seven point bold aerial or something like that. Um, I was able to kind of figure it out as um, play a lost soul from a deck, which is kind of a like copy paste star ability on a few different cards, like Amos and Terra the Delayed. Um, so, you know, it, it's certainly one that um, is not too hard to figure out, and it uh, kind of fits as you can see here the the tops of the the letters all sort of match across the spacing and everything. So. Um, and of course these aren't like finalized yet um, it you know might change to be you know, thematically different um, as far as the ability on the manger I feel like it might have something to do with animals I think that that would be kind of cool if it did um, it might give a little more of a boost to the the animal theme but I mean it's since it's the nativity, it's really focused on the birth of Jesus, and, um, you know, I think the humility that he had in being, you know, going from, you know, all, having all the you know, glory and, and power that he has in, in heaven to you know, humbling himself to the earth and being, you know, born in a, in a stable, in, you know, in a feeding trough, which is what a manger is, um, so I think that you know, there will probably be some um, you know, more interaction than just you know, working with animals, uh, just because that's you know, really what it, what it's about, um, not just any general you know, feeding trough, I guess. <laughs> um, so Bethlehem Stable was another card that was spoiled. This is a fortress. Um, it, it's a place to set aside, it has an nativity identifier, and it says it holds the manger, so you can activate the artifact that we just saw in Bethlehem Stable. Um, it probably doesn't have much to do with animals, because it's a good fortress, and animals are usually evil characters, but um, you know, maybe something with like the good enhancements that are on some sides of animals, like uh, wild ox and leviathan, um, or it could just be kind of like a, a place to hold your nativity heroes or something, um, like a, um, a protection fortress for them, or maybe it triggers off of a nativity hero attacking, kind of like threshing floor. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it had a pretty similar ability to threshing floor, or it was like protect nativity heroes in your territory from, uh, from harm or from opponents, and then um, you know, something that triggers when a nativity hero attacks. That's kind of my guess, uh, just because this is kind of where nativity heroes all converged, I guess, with like the wise men and shepherds, and well, I guess 
technically speaking, the wise men probably weren't at the the stable. Sorry to burst some Christmas story bubbles, but um, at least like it, it seems like the shepherds were there, and um, you know, that's kind of your nativity scene, I guess. All of the, the characters that you would see in there, so. Um, I think that, that that would be reasonable. Um, Gabriel, Mouth of God. So this one's really exciting. Gabriel has had um, many reprints, starting from the first version of Warriors and then in Kings, which both discarded um, enhancements from your opponent's deck. The, the Warriors one discarding any enhancement, the Kings one discarding only evil enhancements. To uh, the Disciples version, and finally the I-Deck version, um, which both like recur enhancements the disciples one just recurs luke enhancements and then you can like, banish it to get some protection or something like that um and the i deck version just lets you search your discard pile for any silver brigade enhancement which is pretty sweet so uh, i'm not sure if we'll maybe see any of those reused on um gabriel here i think like the discarding enhancement for an opponent's deck uh reusing that would i think would be kind of cool um but the main thing that I think is, I mean, that we, we can see from the spoiler already is that it's green and silver. Um, there are angels that are prophets, but so far none of them have had green. So, and, and there are very few angels in Redemption that have other brigades than silver. Like, angels, an, an angel's offense is almost like always mono silver which makes it pretty good for cards that like count your good brigades and have negative effects based on that but um now with gabriel being green and silver it opens um things up like hidden treasures i mean using um all the the profits like um related related enhancements like two bears i guess interrupt the battle if he's by a prophet you get to shuffle um uh, card of each evil brigade um, so this is definitely something new I'm a little uh, I mean I'm, I'm kind of excited to see where it goes um, I'm curious if there will be you know kind of some green silver more like balanced strategies now with profits um, where you know Gabriel uh, will kind of be the what what holds it together i guess but um yeah i think that this is this is pretty sweet um having silver kind of dip into other brigades where it, you know usually hasn't in the past um but we do see a lot of that with demons so you know maybe that's kind of the thinking with like introducing it for for angels as well i don't know like we have the demons, like the Roman and Greek and Babylonian ones that are two colors. So, other next hero, I guess, uh, Joseph the Betrothed. He's got uh, big numbers here, with eleven nine, and he's just kind of chilling there on his little in his little workshop. Um, you know, maybe he's thinking about what to what to build next, or like how we can make the next plow even better i don't know doing some some carpentry stuff um and i think that i mean we did just see uh, joseph and mary reprints in um the the last set loc um but i think that you know they're going to be kind of different here um he's got i mean we can see that the the brigade for nativity is mostly white um as we saw um well, I guess we haven't seen any other nativity heroes yet other than um, Gabriel, right? I don't remember who the first one was, but yeah, it seems like the nativity brigade is white, and I don't know, maybe Joseph will let you kind of like build something, like get a, um, I mean, I guess weapons probably weren't really the, the carpenter's jobs like i mean i think maybe more like agricultural stuff so like tools so i don't know maybe searches for like a site or a fortress or has something related to uh, one of those or maybe gets you some um card value with like his uh you know cool building skills i don't know um 
kind of tough to speculate at this point, but um, next is magnifying multitude. Uh, it seems like this is probably um, the, the, the multitude that appears to the shepherds, I want to say. I mean, there is a card later, like the heavenly host, that um, also seems to um, fit this. So uh, this could be used in a, a different case. Um, we do see another new term here with Unity Heroes Gospel, which is just um, you know, a, a gospel hero is from one of the four synoptic, or one of, one of the four gospels, I guess, I think the, yeah, um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I think synoptic gospels are just Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I could be wrong in that, I gotta, I gotta brush up on my gospel terminology, um, anyways, so from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, uh, is, are the gospel heroes, so magnifying multitude has unity there, and it's a 12-12, it's got some pretty beefy numbers there, so I'm kind of expecting, like, a similar effect to, like, the angelic army from, uh, Revelation of John, because it kind of had the same thing, like, it's all of your heroes are Revelation heroes, but that was, you know, before unity, unity was a thing, so, um, could be something similar there where like it triggers when you play a good dominant you get to discard an evil card and player set aside is how angelic army works so maybe magnifying multitude is similar um but yeah definitely uh cool to see some more um really you know beefy cards like last one last card i think that we had was that was 12 12 when a hero was legion of angels if i'm not mistaken um well no i guess we had mighty warrior i think it was 12 12 um, but Legion of Angels in the, um, I deck, which is just a meek hero, um, and this one seems like it's going to have an ability, because otherwise Unity wouldn't make sense, so. Going on, Mary Holy Virgin, um, based on the cropping, I guess, that, that we, or the portion of the picture that we get to see, um, it seems like this is going to be a flip hero, so, um, there will be a, another Mary on the other side, whether or not it will be a meek hero, uh, is, is yet to be seen, but, um, definitely one side of it has an ability, because, um, she also has Unity Heroes Gospel, um, I wonder if maybe the other side will have red if she's meek, or maybe green, because, um, she does have the Prophet identifier, um, you can see also on this one that the rare, um, indicator or like the rarity indicator is on the the left side there um which it you know she might not be a rare she might be um i mean i'm guessing she'll at least be a rare because she's you know, pretty important to the whole gospel story but um and, uh yeah maybe maybe she'll be an ultra rare we'll see um so yeah i think that um well we're getting to see that flip heroes are going to um, you know, continue seeing print, I guess, or, um, I'm, I feel like it's probably not going to be a, well, yeah, I don't know if it'll be a meek side or not, since, like, Joseph doesn't, doesn't seem to have one, um, so it might not be exactly like it was in LOC, where it was, like, ability on one side and, you know, meek on the other, um, it might just be, like, um, you know, abilities on both sides and kind of depending on, like, what you have unity for or something. Um, I don't know. I think that would be kind of cool. Maybe, like, Unity Heroes Gospel and Unity Heroes Nativity or something like that. That would be kind of cool. This one is also exciting. Peter the Rock. So, Peter is originally printed in the Apostle set as a red 1010. Then in the I deck we had a purple 1010, and then in early church we had a clay 1010, and now we get him as a clay green 1012. So he's even a little bit uh, stronger, a little bit more fortitude because he is the you know the rock after all. Um, but this is the first time that Peter gets green because he is a prophet. Um, but now he gets like all of. Uh, he, he's, kind of come full circle, I don't know, it's all, he's hit all of the brigades that he's relevant in, I guess, um, you know, purple is kind of the disciples brigade, clay kind of being the, you know, early church, um, holy spirit, 
um, and that kind of stuff. And um, now he's got the, the Prophet Brigade in there too, which is pretty sweet. Um, I guess like if he was like a Luke hero, he might have gold, like, in, you know, NT gold is kind of in Luke, but um, hard to speculate what the ability is going to be on this one. Um, I kind of wonder if he's also another flip card. Um, we do see that he's like kind of full art, so might be one of the ultra rares in the set. Possibly, I don't know. Um, but you know, we didn't really get to see much of the the picture in this case, so he could certainly be a flip card with like Peter the Rock and Peter the, you know, something not quite as rocky when he was more shaky on his. Um, you know, faith and he you know, denied Jesus in the, the courtyard of the high priest or when he was you know tried to walk on water but um, you know, he eventually looked away from Jesus and the the you know, wind and the waves were just overwhelming and uh, he started to sink um, but yeah I mean I think that Peter the Rock is is definitely going to be pretty pretty solid Shepherds of Bethlehem another nativity hero this one um, yeah, it's it's a little hard to think of what they might do other than, I mean, like they they care for sheep. Maybe that's like a you know, soul generation kind of thing. Um, you know, I think that that's kind of become an important part of themes now as they get introduced. So if the nativity theme is going to be um, you know, competitive or you know, popular or any good, I guess it, it should probably have something to generate lost souls and shepherds of Bethlehem kind of seems like a, a good hero for that. You know, they kind of are pretty humble, um, uh, humble people, humble folk. Um, but they're nine, seven. So they're you know, a little, uh, they're kind of up there as far as numbers go. Um, won't get initiative quite as easily, but, um, they'll, you know, put in some work if you're in a by the numbers kind of situation. Another angel here, the expatriator. This is one that was um, kind of had people guessing at a lot of different uh, you know, parts of the gospel where um, this would actually be um, you know, what what angel this would be referring to. Um, I think the most likely guess was uh, when you know, Satan uh, fell like lightning or was you know, cast down from uh, from heaven. That's referred to in uh, Luke, I want to say. Fall like lightning was a card printed in, in Disciples. And so the expatriator you know, would basically be the one who was like in charge of you know, casting him out, I guess. Um, that's kind of the, the um, just a you know, speculation at this point. It was um, not you know confirmed necessarily, but um, I think that seems like a pretty reasonable guess. And you'll notice a lot of the, the spoilers and stuff that we have seen and and you know, are and will see. The art is coming out of the the box, which is super cool. I really like what they've been doing with uh, the art and stuff lately. And um, really looking forward to seeing what we, you know, the the entirety of the set and the alternate versions, and you know if they do like ultra rare pluses again. Um, so it seems like this guy maybe is like anti demon uh, power, I guess, or like you know something to to deal with those you know, King of Tyrus and Red Dragons that we see all over the place now these days. So. Um, could be could be something there, but um, I feel like he'll probably have a little bit bit more to him than just that. Uh, another angel, the heavenly host. I, this also kind of seems like they're appearing to shepherds, um, so you know there might be uh, something similar to the um, the multitude that we saw before, but uh, I'm not sure which one will uh, be this one. I mean, they're both nativity, so they're both involved at some point. Um, another thing we see here is that token is in the identifier, which we uh, have only seen, we've only had one token card before 
in the entire history of redemption, which is Majestic Heavens that creates a lost soul token in your opponent's land of bondage. And um, this one, I mean, the way that uh, the, the token part is worded in the identifier is, uh, or in the special ability, it says, like, a, you create a such and such token, um, and then the identifier is just, like, clarifying what the token is, or, like, uh, the kind of describes it. Um, I have have a hard time believing they'll have be making, like, any other tokens than just, like, lost soul tokens. That kind of seems to be the most likely. Um, you know, Majestic Heaven says, token, matching brigade, or matching testament to the, um, the, the lost soul placed here or something like that. Um, so it kind of just describes the, the testament of the, the lost soul. Um, so I think that this one might be kind of similar. Uh, it might, you know, match the, the testament of something or, um, maybe even give it like a little ability or something. That would be kind of cool. Um, I tried to kind of figure out like what was, uh, what it was just based on like the, you know, the bar, the, the sensor bar, I guess, not quite cutting off all the, the edges of the letters, but I couldn't really figure it out. So if you guys, you know, want to, if anyone feels ambitious trying to take a shot at it or, you know, what letters would, would fit in there, what words with the spacing and everything, <clears throat> be my guest, let me know in the comments. Um, but seeing more territory class characters is cool and seeing more token creators, I think is really cool. And I think this is the last hero that, uh, we've seen so far. And it kind of got spoiled in a different way. It, you know, has, instead of just being just the, the art, we got to see just a little bit of the ability and the reference verse, which is actually kind of important, um, because now Luke 2.9 is the, the angels appearing to the shepherds and, like, the messianic messenger is kind of the the first one and then the, you know, the heavenly host or, um, you know, maybe the, the multitude from before, I don't know, one of them appears you know, behind them and you know, suddenly the heavenly host is filled and they're all praising God and, um, you know, it's all pretty cool. Um, but you get to see a little bit of the ability and it's kind of hard to figure out like what the entire thing is, but like you can, something about a nativity card from somewhere, so maybe it's like you can take a nativity card from reserve or from deck, um, and then if, or something, if you reveal a good uh, probably dominant from your hand, or uh, maybe it's good nativity card, um, and then we can see may ban to a something, I'm gonna guess that it bans to like a nativity angel or new testament angel or something like that where it can, uh, maybe a generic angel brings in, you know, the, the heavenly host or the multitude, uh, and then at the end it says interrupted, so probably, you know, cannot be interrupted. Not be interrupted. Band abilities are pretty cool. Um, you know, make sure that your heroes stay in the battle, um, and that you know you're especially if you're like searching for cards and stuff too, um, helps you to kind of keep track of what all you you have. And you know, if the abilities get undone, then it can be confusing. But um, yeah, definitely another cool hero. Um, the other heroes that were maybe kind of hinted at, like someone uh, in the Discord mentioned like you know, transfiguration versions of Moses and Elijah would be pretty cool and Gabe you know, reacted to that comment, so kind of read into that what you will, like maybe that means that you know, Gabe was like, oh yeah, that's you know a decent idea, or maybe that's actually a part of the set and Gabe is, you know, like, hey, you're onto something here. Um, so that would be something that would be uh, pretty cool as well. Um, okay, we do have one more hero here, Zechariah the Silent. Um, Zechariah, or Zechariah was, um, as he's named in the version of the Bible that was used for redemption uh, back in Priests, which is when he was originally printed. Um, he really didn't do a whole lot. He like, had access to the Herod's Temple site. Um, you can ban to Elizabeth, and then a Gabriel is in play, like, prevents something, or, you know, um, 
never really got to see too much use. Um, never really a whole lot of Herod's temple priests either. I think he might be the only one, or like, um, I mean, I guess technically I think you can choose Doodle for priest to be a Herod's temple priest, um, but there hasn't really been any reason to, I guess. Um, but here he's getting repentanted with nativity because he's kind of involved in the nat nativity story being the father of uh, John the Baptist and uh, is also a prophet, which, you know, might be, be interesting. Um, and then he's a Herod's, or Herod's temple priest, uh, so he got, ended up being teal and white for you know, priest and nativity. Um, yeah, not all prophets have to have green, so um, I think having more three-color heroes uh, is maybe not the best for the game, so... Um, you know, two colors I think are good because you can kind of mesh strategies, but three colors you kind of just, you know, make it too versatile. I don't know. Maybe with like a tamed down ability that's not quite as good. I mean, like three color heroes, the ones that do exist are certainly not staples by any means. So, all right, good enhancements. I'm gonna try to maybe speed things along a little bit here because I don't want the video to go too long. But um, we also see the Nativity Identifier on Enhancements, so so far we've had it on Artifact, Fortress, Heroes, Enhancements. Um, I'm guessing there won't really be any like evil cards with it, because there's not a whole lot of bad stuff involved in the nat Nativity scene. I don't know, maybe the Innkeeper who said there was no room for them, uh, maybe he would be a bad guy. Or <laughs> um, but here the an angel appears uh, just based on the picture it kind of seems like it's probably Gabriel appearing to Zechariah um, so uh, it could be similar to like a reprint of Gabriel meets Zechariah which is a card printed in uh, Foo, Foo uh, Faith of Our Fathers that is silver and teal uh, an enhancement that lets you search for a New Testament angel and then you can ban it into battle um, so maybe this does something similar um, so that would be kind of cool. It, I mean, I'm sure it, like, tutors an angel to some degree, because that's, you know, an angel appears. It, it's just here. Uh, Day of Judgment is another uh, star card. We can kind of see the, the star ability shaved off at the top there. Another three-color card. Um, I think it was kind of hinted at that it would be similar to something like Day of the Lord, or um, what's, I think, yeah, Day of the Lord is the one from Prophecies of Christ. Um, that's three colors, and like you can um, you know, banish it to banish all evil cards in battle. Um, I think that this would probably be a similar uh, effect. Um, that one was, I want to say, teal, red, and green, and this now is clay, gold, and purple, so we're just kind of introducing um, a similar card in, um, in you know, with a uh, with different brigades. Um, the star ability, uh, I believe it was figured out in the Discord, is just play a lost soul from a deck. Um, so, kind of another pretty simple copy and paste, like, put the star ability on here. Um, which, I don't know, maybe thematically it kind of makes sense. Like, the Day of Judgment is coming, there are going to be lots of lost souls that we have to try to rescue before the Day of Judgment comes. Because, you know, we want as many people as possible to come with us to heaven. Like, that's yeah, pretty pretty good uh, reasoning there, thematic, thematically, I guess. Magnificat. Uh, another nativity enhancement involves music. This was, um, kind of like, Mary's song, I think. They were kind of, like, giving thanks to God for, um, you know, everything that he's been doing like you know choosing her um <clears throat> to kind of bring on this this miracle of uh you know bringing his son into the world uh, which is pretty sweet and it was uh it sounds like it was considered like briefly as a legacy rare but um because it originally came out in disciples to like negated evil characters and then you can set aside an evil character for two turns if he's by new testament female i think um but it wasn't you know, all that common, uh, it was used in some Garden Tomb decks back when that was popular, but, did I say it? Did it come out in Disciples? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did. Anyways, um, but this reprint seems like it's going to be pretty cool. It is territory class, so it's probably going to have something, um, 
you know, something something cool there, maybe to generate some muscles or search for, um, you know, a card involving music or search for Mary or something like that. Um, that's kind of how you know, most most territory class cards are just about like getting card advantage or um, you know searching for particular things. So um, that'd be kind of cool. This one was just the picture spoiled. We didn't get to see the um, you know, icon or the name or anything, but it's the art from a card that was originally from Warriors that was reprinted in Priests uh, called Redemption, the name of the game. Namesake card, maybe? I don't know. Um, basically what it did, it just like allowed you to, I think, release uh, a captured hero or one that was like converted to an evil character. You convert it back to a hero. Um, so definitely, yeah, fit for a reprint with kind of a updated special ability, especially if it's, you know, the name of the game, you know, it's, maybe it's going to be like an alternate win condition kind of card, like Lamb's Righteousness or, um, So Reap and Rejoice that lets you, or you know, Eternal Inheritance, let you rescue a lost soul in kind of a different means, like maybe it's, you know, like, like Lamb's Righteousness where you rescue a captured hero, um, I think that would be pretty thematically on point. So, uh, Spirit as a Dove, another reprint of a card. Uh, it was originally white. It lets you search your deck for a New Testament card, or a New Testament good card. Uh, and it cannot be negated if John the Baptist was in play, because that's, um, I think, referring to when Jesus was baptized and, and um, you know, the Holy Spirit is kind of comes down on him in the form of a dove. Um, be a really cool scene. That one was not territory class. Uh, it was a promo. So I think getting this reprint here as territory class and now clay because you know, that's kind of a brigade of the, the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm guessing it might have a similar ability, but maybe not be quite as powerful just because like, I don't know, Solomon's dream was kind of there. Like if he's by, it had to be used by Solomon or a meek hero but it could search for any good card, which is maybe a little OP for a territory class card. So I'm guessing that they kind of like toned it down a little bit or maybe made it more specific, like it had to be you know, used by a certain hero. Maybe it searches for the Holy Spirit. Um, maybe it only searches for a dominant, which wouldn't necessarily be that good. I don't know. Um, but it does make me think that we'll probably see a John the Baptist reprint in this set for sure. Um, and he might be like green and clay or something like that. Because, I mean, previous versions of him were white and prophets before um, that was really, you yeah, know, green was kind of the, the brigade for prophets. And then in Disciples, he was printed as green because he, you know, he was kind of just fit the prophets theme. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, a clay green John the Baptist, we, we could probably uh, expect that, I think. Um, maybe gold in there, depending on if he's from, you know, Luke or John. I don't know. Uh, the Annunciation, another uh, territory class card, another nativity card, another card with a star ability that we got to see a little bit of that uh, seems with the, the spacing is, like, look at a hand or reserve, another... Uh, one that we saw in like Emmaus Road, Solomon's Dream, Balaam's Prophecy, that kind of stuff. So uh, it's territory class, it's three colors, which means only one in type two deck. So it's you know, probably pretty good. Um, I feel like it's pretty similar to uh, like Birth Foretold. That kind of seems like it might be a reprint there with a different name in a way. Um, so it you know, might search for Son of God, might search for a nativity card, um, and do something along those lines. Uh, the Child is Born. This is a reprint of a super old card. Okay, maybe not like super old, but you know, it's uh, been around for a very long time, as long as I can remember playing the game. Uh, a Child is Born uh, was basically like the authority of Christ, but for demons. It discarded all demons in play, and it cannot not be interrupted, prevented, or negated, so... <laughs> That was a little, like, typo on the card. That was always kind of a, a joke, but it just, you know, cannot be negated. Um, that was kind of a, a good card for a while, but hasn't really seen any play lately, even though it was given a little more 
uh, it was it was given a little love with the woman with the child in uh, Revelation of John. But this one, it seems like it's going to be effectively the same card, or like, I mean, even though the article was changed at the, the beginning of it from a child to the child, um, it's going to still be, like, I think count as the, the same card for deck building purposes. Not that the old one will probably get used much um, anyway, but this one will probably be pretty good. I think any, um, any cards with... Uh, decent you know, star abilities. Oh, I guess this one was... We haven't talked about the star ability here. Top deck a star card from a reserve, um, I think, is what it is. I think just based on the space, maybe the the A might not be in there. But we did see that with, like, Akeem the Compiler, that you can top deck an OT card from a reserve, so you can do your opponents as well. Um, but this was one that I kind of pieced together myself, and I think that... The A might be in there, because um, I don't think that there's space in there. For, um, well, I guess, yeah, it could just be from reserve, because then it would default to yours. So, yeah, I don't know. Looking at it, that might be the space. I don't know if there's space for an A in there, but yeah, that'd be kind of cool if it was. <laughs> Hopefully it's got, like, not being gated or something in the special abilities, so that it's a nice tossable enhancement with the 7 uh, strength there. That'd be kind of cool. The Destroying Spirit, we see, or we will see a few demons in this set for sure, because Jesus cast out a lot of demons or a lot of spirits that were possessing people and doing all sorts of weird stuff, so, um, Destroying Spirit, uh, we don't know exactly where it's from, um, I, or I have a couple of guesses, like one is maybe like, uh, when the Pharisees were seeking for a way to destroy Jesus, like they might have had a Destroying Spirit within them. Uh, it could maybe also refer to, like, um, you know, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but the thief was a demon printed in priests, um, you know, that had the reference of John 10.10, so I don't know if they would necessarily, like, reuse destroying spirit without, I mean, they'll probably reprint the thief as well, but I don't know if they would, like, use the same verse for two characters like that, where they're, like, basically more or less the same character. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I'm interested to see where this one uh, comes in. Malchus is another uh, card that was originally printed in Priest that was never all that great, but he was the, the servant of the High Priest that Peter, who, um, you know, it's that old bald dude there, he cut off Malchus's ear um, when Jesus was being arrested, and then Jesus was like, well, Peter, Hold, the, hold your horses. Like, this is not what we're doing here. And he heals Malchus's ear on the spot. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe he'll, like, lose something and then get it back. Uh, maybe, like, discard a card to draw two or something. I don't know. Um, but he's a 2-1, so he's pretty small. He's, I mean, he you know, was, like, a, a servant. Um, like a, you know, uh, maybe part of the guard there, he is warrior class, um, in, um, in this case, so he's, you know, maybe got some fight in him, but he's 2-1, so good initiative character at the very least. <clears throat> Strong Demon is a reprint from, uh, well, I think it was originally printed in the D deck, and then as just a Black Brigade Demon with no special ability. And then I think the G deck as well, he gained a warrior class, so it was still black. And now, or and then in priests, or no, disciples, yeah. Um, so after orange was introduced in priests, he, in disciples, he got to be orange. He was, like, protected from, I want to say, purple, and yeah, just discarding capture abilities on good enhancements. And it cannot be interrupted by a purple card, so purple was really popular in disciples, so... Um, and even before then, with, like, Reach of Desperation and Authority of Christ, so you, like, enter battle, draw three, and play Authority of Christ to discard um, all evil characters, so Strong Demon was a way to get around that. Cannot be interrupted by a purple card, which means, you know, Reach of Desperation couldn't get through it, My Lord and My God couldn't get through it, so, um, yeah, Strong Demon is pretty strong. Um, he's the 
the one who was possessing the the boy that the disciples couldn't drive out the demon. Uh, so the man you know, was taking it to Jesus and was like, oh, your disciples couldn't drive him out, but I don't know if anyone can do it. And then Jesus was like, oh, you guys have so little faith. Like, what is, what's going on with this generation? And, um, you know, go check out uh, Mark 9 to, to read more about that. Um, not sure exactly. I mean, like, I'm sure a strong demon has kind of uh, similar, like, protection stuff. Maybe it's like... You know, the king of terrorists for New Testament heroes? Could be. Could be. Um, Destructive Sin. This was an interesting one that I did not really expect to see to be reprinted in this set because the the one from TXP was uh, in Ecclesiastes. Um, so, not sure if this will be a reprint of one from Ecclesiastes if, or if there's like a another verse in the Gospels that also fits, um, but the it was one of the earlier cards that was spoiled, and it did have a cutoff uh, star ability that was eventually guessed, and so Gabe revealed the um, you know, full star ability as well, of discarding a good card from a reserve, which I think is a pretty cool star ability. I was actually a little disappointed that we lost that with Morden Weep, because <clears throat> uh, when Morden Weep was banned, um, but we did get it with uh, the Foolish Shepherds, um, just because, like, at that point, it was really popular to, you know, use Exiles or Book of the Covenant to get I Am Creator on first turn, so if you had More Than Weep or, you know, know how full of Shepherds, you could reveal that star ability and discard, you know, your opponent's I Am Creator from their reserve and, you know, slow them down, especially if they drew Exiles, so then you're, you know, you get to... Before they use the Lost Soul ability, you get to be like, uh-uh, like, nope, we're gonna go ahead and discard that now. Um, so, I think it's a pretty cool star ability. The, uh, TXP version, you would place it on a hero, and then it negated, uh, the hero special ability, and then also the, uh, good, its owner's good fortresses and covenants. So, um, I imagine that this one will kind of have the same sort of effect, like stopping... Uh, a lot of your opponent's stuff, maybe negating their good draw abilities, or negating, um, you know, abilities on more than just one hero, maybe heroes of a chosen brigade, something like that, I don't know, that would be kind of cool to see. Uh, Evil Armor is another card that was reprinted. Some people were thinking it was going to be like a 2k horses for orange, but, um, the I mean, for armor, it seems like it would probably be something with, like, protection. You know, like, Goliath's armor is protect bearer from the next enhancement played by an opponent. Not going to get it if you spy a giant. So maybe evil armor will have something like that. But when it was um, most recently printed in Priests, the, that version was, like, enter of the battle, reveal the bottom card of your deck. If it's an evil enhancement, you can take it or something. And then you can... Or evil card, I think you get it. And then you can play the next enhancement. So... Evil armor as a weapon might do something similar. You, like, maybe reveal the bottom card and you can take it. If it's evil, you protect your evil character or something like that. Um, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, Heavy Burden is another one that was uh, spoiled. It's like the guy's, like, falling out of the picture. It's pretty sweet. Um, I feel like uh, it's probably going to be a place enhancement. It is, a ter it is territory class, um, so, like you place and maybe it like taxes your uh, opponent's hand or something like that, like they have to discard a card on each upkeep, or um, you know, uh, it looks like it's got a lot of like Pharisees involved there, so it might have some synergy with Pharisees since it's also in gray. Um, so I think that that would be, um, yeah, that, that would be my guess, best guess at this point. Just a Hireling was a card that also could use a reprint. It was from the Rock of Ages set, and I think they were thinking about making a little a legacy rare, and it maybe would have been good enough to, but um, this, I mean, they are giving it kind of the same ability, but even better. So uh, you can discard your Pharisee or Sadducee to shuffle up to three Lost Souls, which was basically the ability on the old one. Uh, this one keeps on going, it says, or any number of meek lost souls. So, synergy with meek lost souls is expanding from, you know, just like a uh, Kings of Judah defense or something like that. Um, 
<clears throat> and then this this one also cannot be prevented if you control a Meekla soul. So lots of Meekla soul synergy there. I'm excited to see more of that. I wonder if we'll um, no, that will be kind of the theme of like either Pharisees or Sadducees that we see in here. Like lots of Meek soul synergy. Um, I think that would be pretty cool to expand it into a New Testament theme. And lastly, we kind of had a f couple of uh, legacy rare spoilers that might be fake spoilers. Like, they, they were shown and they might not be legit, but um, I'm going to show them to you guys anyways, just so you can get an idea of what kind of cards might be legacy rares. Um, I think Generous Widow was one, is one that's good enough to... Um, you know, to to be a legacy rare, uh, where it's not a card that's like overpowered that you know we would not would want to rotate out, but it's one that is um, you know, has kind of an interesting ability, and um, I think you know, probably has some some synergies in the new set. Um, so each player must discard two cards from hand and draw two cannot be negated. So this was kind of a um, part of like a little combo piece that uh, Justin had in his Judge Widow Type 2 deck where you would choose your opponent to attack with your Generous Widow while you had Reed Becomes Dust active, so basically they would have to discard two cards from their hand and then the two cards that they draw would just be discarded. So it's like, uh, you know, discard two from their hand, mill two, um, and that was kind of part of the whole combo of his deck. Um, doesn't really work anymore because you can't choose Generous Widow to attack, but you can still choose her in a side battle, so maybe maybe there's still something there. And the last one, Samaritan Water Jar. Um, they do say Legacy Rares like 65 and 66 in the, the bottom corner, which I think makes sense because like um, they do go in biblical order, so Luke 21 to John 4, those are like pretty close. Um, so, they, I mean, these could be legit, um, but who knows. Uh, Samaritan Water Jar is one that, I mean, if I were to not believe one of them, Samaritan Water Jar would be the one, just because it can be pretty annoying. I mean, like, it's a, it's a cool ability, but it can kind of lead to some, I don't know, weird gameplay, I guess. I mean, especially in Type 2, I think. Like, in Type 1, it's it's whatever. Like, you um, get to generate some Lost Souls, but in Type 2, you can, you know, set aside, or you can have up to three of them, so you're just setting aside a whole bunch of their cards, and if you hit a bunch of unique characters, it can make the game harder for your opponent to play, and they're not going to deck it out anytime soon, most likely, so... Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, were there any other notes that we saw uh, spoiled? Um, oh yeah, the size of the set. I guess that's that's kind of an important one. Uh, Game said that the size will be identical to LOC. So LOC had 200... Blanking on the exact number right now. Um, 200 some cards. Um, I don't know. You can You guys can look that up. You know where to find that kind of stuff, right? Um, probably like on the, the forum somewhere or maybe just like on your turn games or something or just look through your LOC cards and figure out what the highest number is, I don't know. Um, but the size is going to be pretty much the same, which I expect means that the uh, like distribution of rarities is probably also going to be the same. So like six ultra rares, um, I want to say it's like 40 some rares. Uh, and then, you know, a bunch of, uh, commons, um, that's kind of my guess, but, uh, or on, on the numbers, and also on the distribution, I mean, that, that just makes sense that if it's the same size set that they're going to do kind of the same rarity distribution, um, maybe they'll make a couple adjustments based on, you know, how, or, you know, reviewing the, the previous set. Um, let's see, there won't be any new keywords like abilities in Gospels of Christ, um, but instead, uh, Gabe said we're ex expanding abilities into the New Testament that haven't had them before. We're also using abilities in new ways that haven't been used before, so 
like when for example when we introduced reserve and ROJ you only took cards from the reserve around POC we started occasionally sending cards to the reserve as well so because there haven't hasn't really been a whole lot of New Testament reserve access um, like it was only in ROJ then there hasn't been a whole lot of like send cards to reserve in the New Testament themes or cards so I think that sounds like they'll probably be integrating some of that and maybe some other stuff as well um, and there will also be um, a term I think that he kind of spoiled is a thief is one that um, didn't uh, hasn't been used before but um, it might be uh, used in, in this set um, there were you know, two thieves on or one on either side of Jesus on the cross or on, on their own crosses but you know Jesus was in the middle um, <clears throat> so yeah I think that uh, it seems like there's going to be a lot of new kind of approaches to, to brigades and, and sets or I guess like themes in this deck or in this uh, this set well um, I've been talking too long clearly can't talk anymore um <clears throat> so i'm really excited for gospel of christ to come out i hope you guys are to be looking forward to more spoilers hopefully i get to do some on my channel i think that would be pretty sweet but otherwise they'll be in discord as we get closer and then uh yeah we'll for sure definitely get at least one box opening on here maybe i'll you know splurge and get two we'll see it might, might come a little bit longer down the line, but uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you next time. Bye.